Fighting with Paddle TV with yet another unbiased, in-depth gear review. And in this video, I am reviewing a kayak that I've wanted to review for quite some time. And there are a lot of kayaks like that, but this here, is the Oru Kayak Coast XT. Now, this is the second Oru Kayak that I have will have reviewed. The first one, the inlet, was a recreational kayak. This isn't. This is a 16-foot long sea kayak, and they say that this kayak is designed to pretty much do anything that a full hard-shelled sea kayak can do. Open water, expeditions, rough surf, or heavy surf, uh, pretty much anything you can throw at a hard shell sea kayak, you can throw at this, that's what they say. I'm gonna take it on the water and give it a test, but first I need to build this thing out, and while I'm doing that, I'm gonna tell you a bit more about it. The Oru Kayak Coast XT retails for 2,000 US dollars. It's 16 feet, two inches long. It's 25 inches wide. It weighs 32 pounds, or 14 and a half kilos and it has a max capacity of 400 pounds, or 181 kilos. It's designed for open water sea kayaking. All right, so she's assembled and ready to go, and I'm ready to go too, but uh, first let me tell you a bit about the assembly process. They say it takes 10 to 15 minutes. This one took me about 30 minutes to put together the first time. And that's because it's my first time. I had to consult the instructions a bunch of times. And the boat is really stiff in the beginning. The folds aren't that easy to bend. And so having to force it quite a bit more and not knowing if I'm doing it right, I didn't want to force it too much. It just slowed down the process. I have no doubt that it will take 10 to 15 minutes after doing this uh, once or twice. The last thing I need to do though is I have to put in the seat pad. Uh, this is the seat pad that comes with the Coast XT, but I think it, this is the same one that comes with all the Oru kayaks. This is the optional upgrade, the gel seat, and this is a lot thicker, looks a lot, it seems to be a lot more comfortable. I did find this one relatively uncomfortable in the inlet that I tested, so I'm happy to test this one. It does raise the center of gravity a little, it's thicker, which means you might lose a little bit of stability, but I don't think it's that big of a deal, and for comfort, I'm willing to give up some stability. The other thing that this kayak has as an option are thigh hooks. Um, now, I learned right now that you need to cut out the pattern, you need to do this, put the thigh hooks together when the kayak is not <laughs> assembled. And so I can't do it right now, I'll have to test those another time, but um, this might be a nice upgrade. It will be a nice upgrade if you're gonna be paddling in any type of rough water or you wanna roll this kayak. Doesn't mean you can't without them, but even if these add a little bit of control, that's a good thing. So let's get this this uh, boat on the water and do what I came here to do, test this sucker. These are big pieces. These are still big, big, thick pieces of ice. <laughs> the river is just breaking up. And I absolutely love this time of year. Well, what a spectacular day to go for a paddle. You don't see this very often, the ice breaking up. It happens so quick. And because of the current here in the Otto River, the ice just gets swept away very quickly. So I'm so glad I got to take advantage of this and what a great opportunity to test out the Oru kayak. 
And not only did I get to test its performance, but I did get to test its durability. Those are big hunks of ice out there and I bounced off a lot of them. But you know what, before I get into that, let's start like I always do for these reviews. And let's start by talking about the portability of the Coast XT. Now, it's a portable kayak and it's a great portable kayak, highly portable. I mean, it's only 32 pounds for a 16 foot kayak. That's lighter than the lightest layup of a Kevlar kayak. So extremely easy to carry. Um, if the fact that it folds down into the relatively small package that it is, is pretty awesome. Definitely you need another bag, unlike some portable kayaks that come with a bag that you can actually throw on, you can fly with, you can check as baggage. You would need to have a different bag. I'm not sure if they sell a bag for this thing um, to fly with, but because uh, you couldn't fly with it the way it, it packs down it, uh, on its own. But high marks for portability, absolutely. Now, uh, how does it perform? Well, paddling wise, I'll be honest, it performs very similarly to a hard shell 16 foot touring kayak. I was very impressed. It carries good speed. Um, it tracks well when you put it on edge. It turns really, really nicely. It does a lot. It, it performs well. Does it perform as well as a hard shell touring kayak, like a quality one? No, not quite as well. It's not quite as fast. I mean, the, they are limited in the design with this thing because of its portable nature, but not far off. Now, stability. Well, this boat is 25 inches wide. What does that mean? Uh, well, a lot of sea kayaks are in the 21 to 23 inch range, narrower, and that makes them faster. Okay, so you do get uh, more speed with a lot of other sea kayaks, but um, that it also makes them less stable. And this thing definitely has great stability. It has the kind of stability you expect from a 25 inch wide uh, touring kayak. It's stable when you're stable when you're sitting there, but also when you put it on edge, great secondary stability on edge. So high marks uh, for stability in this thing. Now let's talk comfort. Now. As a general rule, you give up some comfort for the portable nature of a kayak. And that is, once again, the case with this kayak. That being said, the gel seat upgrade was really nice. I was on the water for a solid hour and a half and my butt was pretty fine. My butt wasn't the issue. It was actually my legs. My legs, I needed to get out and stretch my legs just because of the leg position in here. Without having um, a seat that provides thigh support that holds your legs up or thigh hooks, good thigh supports that hold your knees, you can, you can, they just provide m more control over the boat and more, uh, more of a form fit. Um, the legs aren't quite as comfortable, but you know what? I'm being picky here. Overall, quite a comfortable kayak, especially with the gel seat upgrade. Uh, the, the foot pegs, they weren't as nice as full foot braces. That It has a bar in the front as a foot, foot bar instead of foot braces, but it still actually did the job quite well. Um, no real complaints there at all. So overall, pretty good marks for comfort with the gel seat, uh, definitely uh, knock a few marks off with this seat that it comes with. So now let's talk about value. This boat retails for $2,000 uh, US dollars. For a touring kayak, that's in line. It's not even, you're not even really paying a premium for the uh, portable nature of this kayak. A lot of 16 foot sea kayaks, touring kayaks, are right in the $2,000 range. And they can be a lot more expensive if you get a composite uh, kayak, carbon Kevlar uh, uh, kayak. So $2,000 is good value, absolutely. You know, the, one of the big questions though uh, about value is durability. Is this thing durable? Well, you know, I just beat it up on some ice, pretty good. And I was never concerned when I was hitting the ice. Uh, it certainly didn't let any water in, and 
I didn't feel like I was treading on thin ice, if you will, when I was hitting the ice. And I'm, there's some sharpish edges on ice too. And But this thing, I mean, I wasn't banging into it super hard. I, I wasn't being foolish, but um, I was banging into some hard, uh, sharp ice and it handled it very well. I think over time, that's really the question. This is, it's a very light material that the edges uh, I'd be worried about over time. But I think, a, you'd need to abuse it, you need to drag it around. B, you'd need to use it a lot before uh, it really wore out on the edges. They say something like 10,000 folds. I mean, I'm never gonna test that. <laughs> uh, but if you've had any uh, issues with this thing, that that's actually would be the best thing. Anybody who has an Oru kayak and has been using it for a long time, please leave a comment down below and let people know your experience with the durability of these things. But my feeling is it's going to be quite durable. I think the bigger problem with durability is when you're assembling this thing, there are some pieces that, you know, if it's cold out, if you're rushing, um, they could, they could break, they could just get worn out rather than the actual shell itself breaking down and letting water in. But I'd love to hear from people with, with that experience. So now who is this kayak for? Well, this kayak is for someone who doesn't need to have paddling experience because at 25 inches wide and the stability it has, a new paddler could hop in this thing and be fine. But it's certainly not as stable as recreational kayaks or some of the other Oru kayak designs that are designed for stability. They're wider and just more stable. But anybody can hop in this boat and have a good time. It has the small cockpit so that you can use the skirt on it. Um, and that's going to limit how many people want to get in this thing. Uh, some people just don't like the feeling of confinement that comes with getting into uh, a touring kayak with a small cockpit. They say this thing is great for open water, heavy surf, almost every conditions. Personally, I don't have that much confidence in this taking this kayak into really rough conditions. And I'm used to paddling in rough conditions and I've taken a number of other portable kayaks into some serious rough conditions. The, the Pakiak and the, the Track Kayak in particular. And those kayaks, I have a lot more, would, I do have a lot more confidence in, in rough conditions. Even the cockpit combing on this kayak, uh, I didn't, couldn't get my skirt, get a good, great seal on, especially the right here uh, where the combing and this, this uh, zipper piece meet and at the stern as well. And so if I think a big wave hit, I'm concerned it would, it would pop off. I think this thing can ha definitely handle moderately rough conditions, but I personally wouldn't take it into heavy surf or really uh, rough conditions where I'm very exposed. And if something did go wrong with this thing, I'm in a lot of trouble. That's just me. Um, I, once again, if you have other experience with this thing, please do leave a comment down below. Other than that, what can I say except I really enjoyed paddling this boat. It was a fun boat to paddle. And for me, that's a big part of the test right there. Is it a fun boat to paddle? Absolutely, highly portable, fun boat to paddle, performs well. Who knows about durability? I love to hear, I'm looking forward to hearing the comments or seeing the comments from people. Definitely solid value, a lot of good things about this boat. Is it for you? Well, that's a different question altogether. It's not gonna be for everybody, um, but for people who want a performance touring kayak that they can take into, I'd say, to moderately rough water uh, and that is you know, highly portable, easy to store, easy to transport, then this is definitely a boat to consider. Well, the sun's dropping and so I'm going to end this review right now. I hope you guys have enjoyed this review and do stay tuned because I got lots more gear reviews, paddling tips and paddling adventures coming. Leave a comment down below, give the, vid the video a thumbs up, subscribe to Paddle TV if you haven't already. And um, well, ice is out, so it's time to hit the water. <laughs>